Well, when I was a student and first introduced to Whitehead, I certainly understood that Whitehead was interested in the whole of the natural world. But because I was a theologian, uh, I wasn't supposed to be interested in the natural world. Uh, Protestant theology was Kantian. And Kant is, from my point of view, the great divide. Prior to Kant, philosophers thought they should deal with nature. After Kant, philosophers thought they should not deal with nature. The same with theologians. So that was turned over to the natural sciences. And the natural sciences and the human humanistic studies were two totally separate activities. And I was brainwashed into that in spite of the fact that I was following Whitehead. Then in uh, almost exactly 50 years ago, I was certainly suddenly awakened, as many people were in the United States and I think around the world, to the fact that uh, human society was on a collision course with the capacities of nature to support us. And the discovery that humanity as a whole, but even more widely, the life system as a whole was threatened if we continued on the course we were on, that question, that issue swept everything else away for me. Everything else was of second-rate importance. I had written 95% of a very philosophical book in which I was interacting with um, analytic philosophy. And that book remains 95% complete, but I'll never bother to finish it because it wasn't relevant to what I now saw was really important. So for 50 years, this has been my preoccupation. Now, that in no way led me away from Whitehead. In fact, it opened my eyes to the fact that Whitehead had provided a fundamental alternative to Kant, and that this bifurcation between the humanities and the sciences was uh, totally wrong. He had shown that, and I hadn't even picked it up because I was so socialized by the reality of that bifurcation in everything that had been put on me by my educational experience. So if you want to have a philosophical basis for getting past what Kant did to Western thought, of course, Descartes had done it earlier, but Kant salvaged it from Humean wreckage. And so it's Kant who we have to most directly deal with. Um, if you want to get away from that, Whitehead is the best. I, I feel comfortable with, with making that statement. And Whitehead, very strong emphasis on how nothing exists in itself, everything exists in its relationship to other things, is so similar to what we learn from the ecological sciences that uh, it just seems a natural fit. So philosophically, we need, I don't think there is another equally good, uh, I, I mean, there are other philosophies that help. But you can follow Bergson, and that's fine in the biological and biosciences, but um, Whitehead is able to carry this into even mathematics, and certainly into physics. And his views uh, correspond sufficiently with the evidence from quantum mechanics that it's the best philosophy we have for dealing with physics today. And Whitehead by no means, he called his philosophy a philosophy of organism, so it's by no means alien to the biological sciences. And he made really brilliant contributions to theology, to take at the other extreme, and to humanistic thinking generally. So I do think Whitehead is the philosopher that we need at this juncture of human history. That doesn't mean we shouldn't read a lot of other philosophers, but he can put them together in a way that nobody else can.